couple months back, you guys might remember this massive table that we built. Now, we only built part of it on video so far, and what we've done is broken down the gigantic hickory slabs using table saw, track saw, jigsaw, flattened them, huge mess with the router, and tried to glue it up and keep it perfectly flat. And it was challenging, but here we are today. Slab is out of the clamps. It is looking pretty good. Right now, I got this cleaned up. I got some of the knots cleaned up. We need to move down to the rest of the table over there. Make sure we're not gonna get any floaties in our epoxy. And then we need to put a couple of bow ties right here, which I think I'm gonna do those out of cherry so that in the end, when they darken up, they kind of look like the, the darker portions of the hickory. And then we gotta flip it over, clean up the backside a little bit, put lots of tape on there so that we can pour our epoxy, which we're not gonna need a ton of epoxy. I'm fairly certain I'm gonna go with clear to fill in all these knots. And then we'll go sand it up and get it flattened. So there was quite a bit of wormholes, dirt, a little bit of rot, some dry wood that need to be cleaned out of these slabs so that when we do pour the epoxy on there, we make sure that it's not filled with a bunch of garbage. This took a while, used a file, chisel, my ice pick to make sure everything was clean and the kids really enjoyed helping out getting things as clean as possible. A little bit of air hose really helped to blow the dirt out of those areas and really show how some of them were much deeper than expected. Now what are we going to do for the epoxy? This is Pro Marine Supplies Epoxy. I do think it's been renamed recently and I have found this stuff to be the hardest epoxy that I have used and I've used several different brands. I've been sponsored by a couple of different brands but when it comes to tabletops I think that this is the hardest epoxy that I've been able to find so far. So what am I doing right now? I should be pouring and filling in the whole void. Now no matter what you do with epoxy if you don't seal, you're going to continue to get bubbles, and even if you have that whole void filled with epoxy, when you come back tomorrow, it ain't going to be full. So I like to seal it up first and then go back. Now what are we doing here? We are going to be adding some cherry bow ties that are a beautiful accent, but also will help stabilize that big crack, which we will fill with epoxy, but these bow ties are going to look awesome. So I'm laying out here on paper, folded in half so that we make sure we have a symmetrical bow tie and laying them out over those voids that we already sealed. And here we can get a visual of what we want the bow ties to look like as well as actually use those pieces of paper as a template on the cherry board that we are going to be using. I did choose a portion of the board that had the darkest color and one that had the most grain pattern in there so that these are really an accent piece. Now I'm cutting as close as I can to the paper using the bandsaw and if you cut into the paper it doesn't really matter because we are going to be using these to mark out the template for where we need to chisel and cut in. Using my strop to make sure the chisels are nice and sharp and all I am doing here is really making sure that the edges of those bow ties are nice and smooth don't have to get to any particular spot because like I said just a second ago we are going to be using these bow ties to mark out the areas that need to be removed so we're really just looking for a nice flat edge. Once we have those bow ties nice and smooth again laying them out in the areas that we want them to be and then using a marking knife I am marking all around the bow ties to put a scribe mark into the wood so that we can locate the areas that we need to remove and also this cuts the fibers on the top so that you don't damage the edge any more than you need to. To make quick work of removing the material, we're gonna hog out the majority of it using a quarter inch router bit in the trim router. This is a down cut router bit so it leaves a nice crispy edge and doesn't pull any of those fibers up towards you. Be careful that you don't get the edge of the router dug in deeper than you need to be so you don't tip the router over on the bigger bow ties. On these small ones, no problem, but the bigger ones, especially when you have that void to contend with, you want to make sure that it doesn't fall into the void and cause a deep gouge or get into the corner. A gouge in the bottom doesn't really matter, but you definitely want to make sure you don't cut the edge at all. I actually think I did accidentally go bigger on one of these, but I was able to just make a bigger bow tie to cover my mistake. Woodworking is often about covering up your mistakes to the best of your ability. We, uh, we have those marking lines that we cut with the marking knife earlier, and we need to use our chisel to make sure we are perfectly nice and straight up to those marking lines, and then we have a nice uniform, smooth edge going down into the void so that we can add the wood glue 
and then bang our bow ties into place. And once you start inserting the bow ties, they're not going to come out. So here I'm going to do a little bit of a test fit, tap it in a little bit, and that's it. Because if I go further than that, and as you can see, I already can't get it out with my hand, I have to use the hammer. Oftentimes when I have these chisels out, people ask me where they're from. I got them off of Amazon. I'll have a link down in the description below. They're a Narex line of chisel, not too expensive, and I don't use them often enough to really tell you if they're fantastic. But for me, they have worked ex exceptionally well so far. Adding some tight bond two into all of the voids, making sure we have good glue coverage in the pocket and on the bow tie itself. Start the insertion of the bow tie, and then I grabbed a board so I could whale on that and not damage the top of the bow tie at all. You can really feel when the bow tie is seated completely in the pocket, and there's no need to hammer beyond that. Using some sawdust to make sure any voids along the edge that I may have missed are filled in. Honestly, a little bit finer sawdust than I have right here would be better, but you gotta live with what you got around you. And there we go, folks, four hand-cut bow ties in a waterfall descending order from larger to smallest, stabilizing that crack and making sure it does not expand. Now, we have sealed our voids. In the next video, we're going to fill them all in with epoxy. We're going to smooth, flatten, and sand everything down. And then we are going to apply my favorite finish for big surfaces like this, Rubio Monaco. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the final steps of finalizing this gigantic hickory slab table video. And we're going to install the custom made metal legs and then move this beautiful table into the cabin where our good friends are going to eat and gather around it and call this table their gathering spot within their home. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one.